Who likes American football here? Baseball? Soccer? Oh, a lot of you. Okay. What's your favorite soccer team? Chelsea. Okay, let's not. <laughs> Do you see what just happened? Listen to this. Hello? Wake up and smell, smell the Play Doh, guys. Honestly, because we're children, guys. What do we just do now? Ah, it's Chelsea, Man United, Liverpool. The truth of our team, we would fight for it. Our football team, our soccer team. But for our own Dean, where's the noise? Where's the noise, people? You're going to support Liverpool. David Beckham, he's the best. Yeah? Messi, who knows Messi? Messi, what's his name? The Argentinian player who plays for, what's his name? Barcelona, yeah? One of the best players in the world. Oh man, you see him playing Champions League yesterday? He was the diamond, man. He was great. <laughs> what's so funny? <laughs> Does this something wrong? <laughs> he was the great. You know, we'll discuss it. The guys who support Liverpool will be debating with the guys who support Man United. They'll be discussing. You might even fight about it. You might not speak to your friend. If you support Liverpool, he supports Man United, and you lost 6-1. <laughs> for example, you won't speak to each other for a week. Look, the truth of such a small thing, we will fight for it. Defend it with our soul, with our intellect, with our eloquence. But what about the, the thing that defines who you are, people? Where's that? You ain't talking, you're not talking to people about this. Your own religion. Islam. We're on the defensive when it comes to Islam. Oh, yeah, that thing. Oh, I'm not praying. I'm just exercising, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I, had, I had some dirt on my shoulder and my, I had to wash my arms up to here, yeah. You know? Think about that, people. It is profound. How important is Allah to us, to our own hearts? This is a big, important thing. Because at the end of the day, years go very fast. This life is very quick. I just, I just a few years ago, I thought I was 18. I'm 31 now. You know? I was 18 just a few years ago. Life goes very quick, people. Don't underestimate it. And also, you have to understand the importance of the deen for yourself. Make the stance today. Is Islam important to me? Or is it just like another religion? Is it something I do on Friday? Is it something I do because my parents did it? And is it something that I do because it's an identity thing? You know, I'm Somali Muslim. I'm Desi Muslim. Is, that, is, that, is this an identity thing? Is Islam just an identity thing for you? Like, you? like you put a hat on and you go out and you wear it? This is shallow, people. This is shallow. Is this the truth for you? Is this your world view? Do you really believe there is a creator for the whole universe? And that he's the only one that deserves to be worshipped. And worship meaning a comprehensive thing. That we don't refer to our egos anymore. But we refer to the divine. We free ourselves from our own ego. We free ourselves to our own, from our own egos and desires. We free ourselves from social pressure. We free ourselves from social conditioning. We free ourselves from the boys next door. Because they want me to look like the way they look. Yeah, you know that conformity thing. How are we going to free ourselves from these things? By referring ourselves to Allah. And Allah in the Quran says something very profound. Allah says that He sent the Prophet to free ourselves from the burdens. And the ulama, the scholars say these burdens, they mean the burden to society. Because we're all burdened with something. Many of us look exactly the same, people. Because we always want to conform. We always want to burden ourselves with other people. You know, you have the goths that hang around with the goths. Yeah? And you have the punks that hang around with the punks. And the cribs, they hang around with the cribs. And the bloods, they hang around with the bloods, right? Because we always want to be the same. We always want to follow the peer pressure. And even in our own families, even Somali and Desi families, you know? Especially in the Desi community. Oh, I can't wear the same outfit again to that wedding. What are they going to say? I can't marry my daughter to this really pious, excellent man because he doesn't have a bigger bank account. What are people going to say? I'm not going to marry my daisy daughter to this black man 
although he's one of the best Muslims in the world? Because he's black. And what are the Daisy people going to say? <laughs> no, but that, this is the reality, people. This is the, the dangerous reality we've fallen into. Even with, our, even with our studies, you know, we failed to be the doctor, and now we're going to be the biochemist. And like, your auntie calls from all the way from Pakistan or something saying, how's the doctor? And your mom goes, yeah, the doctor's all right. Lying. How was his grades? Yeah, he got A stars. But he got all C's. <laughs> You've heard this before. Even my family used to do that as well. My uncle would say, what do you get for your grades? And mom would be like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Just to show a face. So the point I'm trying to say is, Look at these ridiculous burdens we put on ourselves just to conform to what? To human beings, to people just like us. That doesn't really mean anything. So what? Is Allah going to ask you in the day of judgment what grades you got? Or what color your husband was? Or how much money he had in his bank account? Or whether your auntie thousands of miles away that frankly doesn't give a... <laughs> that what she thought about your grades... Or what you thought about, you know, what kind of clothes you wore to that wedding. SubhanAllah, how much energies we put to these things. And we don't even think about how we're going to care for each other. Bad news, people. Look at human beings. We can't even care of each other, bro. We can't care of each other. And we worry about this. You see, if you break it, if you break reality down, it doesn't make sense. How could we act like this? Just because of pride and ego. The biggest destroyer of families, the biggest destroyers of societies, the biggest destroyers of nations. Allah mentions this. Don't have civilizational and social arrogance. Look what happened to people before you. It doesn't mean nothing. So this is why the Prophet came to us to remove us from these burdens. To say there are higher goals that we should have. Bigger things. We are the leaders. That's what Allah says about us. We're here for the people. Not minanas, not from the people, but for them. So it means we have a position of Spiritual leadership. We should be the leaders, people. Why is Somalia, many of you are Somalis, why is Somalia, 10 million people were hungry, starving because of no food? Why was that? When 10 million people in your own country, in America, are dying because of too much food, obesity. Why do we have this situation, people? And don't think oh, I'm not to blame. We are to blame because we have the solution. And don't think there's, there's not enough needs, we have to compete for food and resources all the time. That's outdated cliche. That doesn't work anymore. According to the Food Agriculture Organization, there's enough food on this planet to feed three planets. To feed three planets. So what's the solution? It's not more resources, it's distribution. And what did your prophet tell you about distribution? Zakah, sadaqah. Taking for the, from the super rich and giving to the poor. The distribution of wealth. Islam solved this problem years ago. In New York, in Wall Street. Non-Muslim woman, she's holding a placard. Do you know what it says? We must do banking the Muslim way. They're telling us that we have the solution and we don't even know it. Do you see my point? Be proud of your religion, people. 